What do you know about Canada? It's big, cold, and filled with people who say sorry differently from people in the US, right? And while that's true, there's so much more to this country. I mean, it's the birthplace of ice hockey, the home of polite lumberjacks drinking double doubles, Denmark's worst enemy, and the country with the tallest man-made building up until like 2010. Furthermore, some of the most famous people in the world are Canadian, and Canada has also played a key role in many international stories over the years. It's safe to say that this country is, well, amazing. So let's find out what we should all know about this country, as this is Canada Explained. Canada is the northernmost country in North America. It shares the land border with the United States. At 8,890 kilometers, this is the longest international border in the world. And this is because Canada is absolutely massive. With a total area of 9,984,670 square kilometers, Canada is the second largest country in the world by size, behind only Russia. This area includes 9,093,507 square kilometers of land, and with the remaining 11.76% being water. Canada also has the largest coastline of any country, totaling roughly 243,000 kilometers. Canada borders three oceans, the Atlantic, the Arctic and the Pacific, and this is why the national motto is Amari Usque Ad Mare, or for those of you who don't speak Latin, from sea to sea. With such a large area, Canada has many types of terrain. There are rainforests in the west coast, flat plains in the west and center, boreal forests in the center and east, and tundra in the north. Canada also has around 52,000 islands. The highest point in the country is Mount Logan, which stands at 5,959 meters in the St. Elias Mountains in the Yukon Territory. The largest lake that's entirely within Canada is Great Bear Lake, in the Northwest Territories, which has a surface area of 31,328 square kilometers. Canada's deepest lake, at a depth of 614 meters, is the unfortunately named Great Slave Lake, also in the Northwest Territories. Canada's longest river is the Mackenzie River, at 4,241 kilometers long. With Canada's immense size, it only makes sense that it's a country rich in natural resources. Some of the most important resources are lumber, agricultural products, oil, gas and mine minerals. And while fishing is still an important industry, it's not as key to Canada's economy as it was in the colonial era. Perhaps the most important natural resource in Canada, historically, is beaver pelt. European demand for beaver fur led French and English explorers, trappers and traders to go further into what would become Canada, trading with various First Nations to secure the highly valuable pelts. And this is why beaver is Canada's national animal. For a long time, Canada wasn't a hub for mass European settlement like other New World countries to the south. And there are several reasons for this, but the major one is the climate. If you know anything about Canada, you know that it gets cold there. Like, very cold. The coldest temperature ever recorded was a negative 63 degrees Celsius at Snag, in the Yukon Territory, on February 3rd, 1947. Of course, most Canadians don't live this far north, they live closer to the US border in places like Vancouver on the west coast, where winters and summers see mild temperatures, and Canada's largest city, Toronto, is closer to the east and sees cold winters and hot summers. According to the 2021 census, Canada's population is 36,991,981, and official estimates today put that number at 38,939,056. This makes Canada the 37th most populous country in the world, between Ukraine and Poland. Canada comprises 10 provinces and 3 lesser populated territories. With a population of 40,223,942, Ontario is by far the most populous province. Little Prince Edward Island is the least populous, with only 154,331 people living there. The second most populous province, Quebec, is notable for being primarily francophone. While the country's official languages are English and French, New Brunswick is the only province to be officially bilingual. With a city proper population of 2,794,356 and a metro population of 6,202,225, Toronto is Canada's largest city and largest population center. Toronto has been recognized as the most diverse city in the world, highlighting the importance of immigration and multiculturalism in Canada. The next largest city is Montreal, then Calgary, and then the national capital, Ottawa. Canada's form of government is a federal parliamentary constitutional monarchy. As part of the Commonwealth realm, 
Canada's current monarch is Charles III. His representative in Canada is the Governor General, a position currently held by Mary Simon. The head of government is the Prime Minister. Justin Trudeau is the 23rd and current Prime Minister, having first been elected to the Prime Minister's office in 2015. The national anthem is O Canada, and the flag featured a red field with a white square in the middle, in which sits an 11-pointed red maple leaf. And this has been Canada's flag since 1965. The currency is the Canadian dollar, and did you know that Canadians call their $1 coin a loonie? It's true, it's not because they're crazy or anything like that, but because one side of the coin features a loon. And when Canada introduced a $2 coin, Canadians continued this quirky tradition by dubbing it the Toonie. Canada's economy is highly developed and highly mixed. It is the ninth largest economy in the world, with a nominal GDP per capita of $2.14 trillion. This puts Canada's economy just below Russia and just above Italy. The unemployment rate is 5.7%, the value of Canada's export was $779.2 billion in 2022, and the value of its imports was $757.4 billion. The United States is, by far, Canada's largest trading partner, with the trade between the two nations valued at $908.9 billion. Indigenous people have been living in what's now Canada for at least 12,000 years. These include First Nations Inuit and Métis who are people of mixed ancestry with their own unique culture. Some of the most prominent First Nations in Canada include the Cree, Anishinaabe, and Haudenosaunee. The first Europeans to visit what would become Canada were the Vikings. They established a settlement in Lands on Meadows, in modern-day Newfoundland, in or around the 11th century. They didn't stay for long though, and it would be roughly 400 years before the Europeans visited again. For about 200 years, Britain and France squabbled over Canadian lands, often fighting against and along with various First Nations. This culminated during the Seven Years' War. In 1759, the British won a decisive victory at the Battle of Plains of Abraham just outside Quebec City, effectively ending New France. Both British and French Canadians, as well as First Nations allies, fought against American troops in the American Revolution and the War of 1812. Canadians rebelled against undemocratic colonial rule in 1837 and 1838. The British quashed these uprisings, but did allow limited self-government and eventually Canadian Confederation. The British North America Act created the Dominion of Canada on July 1, 1867. This process of sovereignty continued with the passing of the Statue of Westminster of 1931. This granted Canada and other Commonwealth Dominions authority over their foreign policies. Canada was de facto fully independent by this point, but the British Parliament still had a theoretical right to amend the Canadian Constitution. And this ended with the Constitution Act of 1982. In 1967, Canada consisted of only four provinces, but Canadian settlers continued moving westwards. This process led to the displacement of First Nations, Matisse and Inuit peoples. During the centuries of European colonialism and the growth of Canada as a country, many indigenous people died from warfare and from diseases introduced by the Europeans. Today, 1,807,530 Canadians claim indigenous ancestry. There have always been tensions within Canada between Anglophones and Francophones, meaning English speakers and French speakers. This tension even briefly turned violent in the 1960s and 70s. Quebec has held two referenda on separation from Canada in 1980 and 1995. The Remain side won both times, but only barely in 1995. Most current polls in Quebec shows that secession is not as popular as it once was. Canada's relationships with the United States is its most important international dynamic. Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau once said that living next to US is like sleeping next to an elephant, meaning Canada is affected by every American twitch and grunt. Apart from the massive amounts of trade between the two nations, there are also close political and military allies. Canada was a funding member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, and many Canadians are proud of the nation's military history, with Canada playing important roles in both world wars and in many subsequent peacekeeping missions. And today, Canada spends an estimated $26.5 billion on defense. The North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, came into effect in 1994 between Canada, the United States and Mexico. This was replaced by the updated United States-Mexico-Canada Act, or USMCA, in 2020. The merits of these deals are still debated today, as it allows for greater trade between the three nations. 
but it has also correlated with a decline in certain Canadian industries, such as auto manufacturing. Canadians generally like to get along with other countries, but there's one nation Canada has clashed with repeatedly, and that country is Denmark. We've already talked about Canada's massive border with the US, but this isn't their only international land border. They actually share a border with Greenland, an autonomous territory of the Kingdom of Denmark. This border is on Hans Island, a small, uninhabited, barren island in the high Arctic. Starting in 1984, military and diplomatic personnel of both countries would visit Hans Island, plant their nation's flag and leave a bottle of liquor, typically Canadian whiskey or Danish schnapps. This good natured whiskey war was eventually settled in 2022 when the two countries formally decided to share the island. Apart from being cold, Canada is perhaps best known around the world as being the birthplace of ice hockey. Canada has always been a hockey mad nation, and about 42% of National Hockey League players are Canadian, and Canada regularly wins international tournaments featuring the best players from every country in both men's and women's ice hockey. Some of the greatest NHL players are Canadian, including Gordy Howe, Bobby Orr, Wayne Gretzky, Mario Lemieux, Patrick Roy, Martin Brodeur, Sidney Crosby and Connor McDavid. And other popular sports in Canada include basketball, curling, gridirion, football and soccer. In fact, basketball was invented by Canadian James Naismith. The highest scoring player in international play in either men's or women's soccer is Canada's Christine Sinclair. Canada is also proud of how many artists and entertainers the country has produced. These include actors such as Ryan Gosling, Jim Carrey, Martin Short, Rachel McAdams, Elliot Page and Simon Lee. In terms of music, Canada has produced mega-famous artists like Celine Dion, Shania Twain, Nickelback, The Weeknd, Justin Bieber and Drake. And as a country of immigrants, you can find every type of cuisine in major Canadian cities. And this includes foods like Jewish, Greek, Italian, Portuguese, Ukrainian, Chinese, Indian, Korean, Vietnamese, Arabic, Ethiopian food. But in terms of its own cuisine, Canada is perhaps best known for poutine, a French-Canadian dish consisting of French fries, gravy and melted cheese curds. And this stuff is as good for your mouth as it is bad for your arteries. The most popular coffee chain is Tim Hortons, where you can get a double-double with a Timbit. And that's a coffee with two sugars and two creams with a donut hole. The chain was co-founded by hockey player Tim Horton, and their locations can be found all over Canada though it's now owned by a Canadian-US conglomerate. Some notable tourist attractions in Canada include the CN Tower in Toronto, which is 55.3 meters high, it was for decades the world's tallest freestanding structure, before being surpassed by the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. Old Town Montreal and the Petit Champlain neighborhood of Quebec City offer old world charm in North America. Banff National Park in Alberta offers stunning natural beauty and the Bay of Fundy in New Brunswick features the highest tides in the entire world. Canada shares the Niagara Falls with the United States, but ask any Canadian and they'll tell you the more majestic falls are on the Canadian side. As the second largest country in the world with diverse population of almost 40 million and hundreds of years of history, it's impossible to cover everything in one video. However, it's safe to say that Canada is a lot more than a bunch of polite lumberjacks drinking double-doubles, though there are plenty of those too. But what did we miss? Comment below something you think everybody should know about Canada. Or go learn about another country in the world by clicking one of the videos on your screen right now.